Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be talking about how you can increase horsepower uh, through a more efficient, uh, better designed exhaust. So basically the engineering thought process that goes into designing an exhaust and how uh, possibly switching out your an exhaust for a different one uh, could increase your horsepower. So uh, there's really three things that I'm going to talk about. Um, first off being removing restrictions. So in a typical exhaust uh, you may have something like a catalytic converter, or you'll have some little uh, kinks where it tapers down and uh, the exhaust gets smaller, or you'll just have a pretty uh, narrow exhaust. So what happens is when your piston is pushing up and you've got something like this catalytic converter or a kink or something like that, uh, you're going to build up pressure before it, and that built up pressure is going to travel all the way back to your cylinder. So as your cylinder is pressing up, the only time it can uh, push out exhaust is when the, the pressure in here is greater than the pressure out here. And so once that occurs, then it can push it out. But basically, you want to minimize the pressure in here so that it's as easy as possible to push out those gases. Um, and so with something like a really narrow exhaust, you just might not be able to pump out very much. I mean, think if you just have a straw connected to your exhaust and it has to pump a ton of air through that tiny little straw. Well, it's not going to be able to do it. Uh, there's going to be a ton of back pressure. And so by removing that back pressure, you are then allowing your car to, uh, it's, it's going to be more efficient and it's going to have more horsepower because it doesn't have to work against itself just to get rid of uh, the burnt, burnt gases. So that's one thing you can do is basically eliminate uh, restrictions or simply have a larger exhaust. So you're thinking now, okay, well, why have an exhaust at all or why not just put a massive uh, six inch pipe the whole way from, from your exhaust. Well, there actually is some reasons uh, that you wouldn't want to do that. And uh, part of that is exhaust scavenging. So with exhaust scavenging, what happens is uh, you're going to have exhaust gases pump out of your car in pulses. So once the piston slams up, it's going to send out this pulse of air, basically. And that pulse of air, since it's traveling very quickly, at the front of it, it's basically going to have a high pressure area, and then a medium pressure area, and then a low pressure area. And that low pressure area is basically acting like a vacuum, helping to pull out all of the gases from the exhaust. And that's a good thing. That's what you want. So with a narrower pipe, your pulses are going to have much higher velocity. And so there's going to be a greater pressure differential. And you're going to create a low pressure area behind the exhaust um, and kind of draw out uh, those fumes, those gases. So when you've got multiple uh, cylinders, channeling to one central exhaust and you've basically got a low, low pressure, whenever that exhaust valve opens, it's very easy for the gases to go out very quickly. And that's ideal. So basically you're going to have to be balancing restrictions versus uh, how narrow you want it because you want, you want high velocity, no restriction. So it, it's kind of a, you got to balance that out to, to optimize it, get the most horsepower. Another good thing you can do with a lot of exhaust uh, aftermarket kits um, many of the times you can, you can actually reduce some weight, so that's a great thing to do uh, to further increase how fast you accelerate. The final thing I want to talk about is anti-reversion. So reversion is when you have gases in your engine uh, flowing the wrong direction. So you've got exhaust gases flowing back into the piston, or you've got uh, your exhaust gases flowing uh, up into the intake. You don't want that to happen, obviously. Uh, you're just wasting power. And so what what happens with reversion, uh, for example, say you've got, uh, this is your exhaust stroke, and you want to pump out all these gases. So your piston's going up, and then as it starts to come down, you open up your intake so that you can pull in that fresh air and fuel mixture. Well, if your pressure inside of your piston, in, inside of your cylinder, is greater than the pressure of the intake, then you're going to force that exhaust gas that's still kind of left over back up into the intake. And you don't want that to happen. Um, and so, basically what happens is once you get to your intake stroke and you're pulling in, you have to wait for the pressure inside of the piston cylinder, inside of the cylinder here, to be less than the pressure inside of the intake, so that it draws in that air. And that's pretty much how it works. I mean, the, the pressure in here is typically going to be lower, but at points like this, when it's right at the top and coming down and the intake opens, it could uh, have a little bit of a reverse um, if both valves are still open and you've got a little bit of overlap between your intake and exhaust. So a couple things that uh, engineers do in order to minimize things like this. One, for example, um, 
you're going to have these tapers that you're going to put into your intake and, the, and your exhaust so that the flow in the reverse direction is restricted. It's easy for a flow to go from this to this. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't lose, it doesn't, uh, there's no restriction. It's not going to build up pressure on this side. It can flow through. It may lose a little bit of velocity, but it's not going to build up pressure. So same thing. And obviously these are exaggerated. You're not going to have something with that big of a taper. But that's the point is, uh, if gases were to try to go in reverse, it's just like here, where they're going to build up pressure, and it's, it's going to be difficult to pump it in that direction, more difficult than the other direction. Another thing you can do, for example, if you've got somewhere in your exhaust pipe um, where you might have some reversion, is these little uh, reversion restrictions here. So you've got your exhaust pipe, and if everything's going as normal, your flow just keeps going in this direction, and it's nice and smooth and works out great. Well, if it goes in the reverse direction, if you have uh, some flow, back pressure coming back, well, it's going to hit these pockets, and basically it's going to be more restricted, and it's going to have a tougher time going in the reverse direction. So that's done in order to prevent reversion, um, which ultimately causes you to lose power. So there's things like anti-reversion headers um, and, and piping and stuff like that that you can buy so that that doesn't happen, um, and that can give you an increase in horsepower if you're having a reversion problem. So those are just several ways that uh, a better exhaust system can improve horsepower, increase horsepower, and thus give you better acceleration. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.